So we've had a look at scene resolution um, and how it can have an effect on sort of collisions and the detail and the size of your caches. Um, so now we're going to start varying this uh, some of this, the settings in this to try and get a bit more exciting in our explosion. I'm just going to delete this volume scope. I don't need it anymore. Um, and I'm just going to delete that port because now I'm actually outputting this cache twice because it's delete that one so delete that um, I'm just going to delete this biff because I don't need that either and this is set to right which is good I'm just going to take my collider back down to the default because it's quite low at the moment and it would slow up the sim and these are all fine but that's absolute so if I hit play we can see we're getting this sort of uniform explosion outwards of temperature and you know fire. Um, it's not very rare, varied. it just looks like a sort of large mushroomy thing. And I've got collisions going through there now because I've changed that number back to a higher number. Um, so we want to vary this up a bit. And how do we do that? Well, we have a node called vary source property um, and if we look at the info of this where we can see the details this compound is useful to set per point values on simulation sources for example you could use this compound to vary the size of points generated in the particle simulation so basically it lets you vary some of these attributes on your simulation nodes um, and it tells you quite handily actually all the ones that you're allowed to change per so on a source area we can do fog temp density temperature inherent velocity initial speed speed direction and on source view we can do ignition temperature so um, I want to vary to begin with the temperature which we've got at the moment set to 700 um, the fuel ignition temperature is 580 I want to vary that out um, at the moment we've got it the mode as set so what that means is that the temperature when it's emitted is set to this number straight away when you have it at rate and these other ones it, it does it's sort of adding it over the top but I just want it to be initially set to this number um, which but I'm now going to vary this out so if I go to my info of my air source And I'm just going to make another, click in here, make another source property, just go to my recent, um, change that. And if you find that when you start adding more and more nodes, your graph will sort of slow up when you sort of make changes. Um, and that's because in Bifrost it, it evaluates every time you make a change, which I think they're trying to sort out at the moment but um so it can slow you down but you can get around that by just when you're making changes just pause graph execution so i've made a new very source property i copied my initial speed i'm going to do a min four and a max of maybe eight and uh, i'm gonna leave everything else as is and i'm just gonna what you do now is you just sort of even daisy chain these in. So now you can see I've got this one which I will call speed. And that's going into the temp and the temp's going into the source air. Um, I'm just gonna change my speed node from rate to set so it sort of sets these numbers right at the beginning rather than just adding them over the top. Um, so let's unpause, resume graph execution, and just hit play. Uh, 
and you can see we are slightly getting slightly different speeds um, and sort of breaking up this surface a bit more but it's not really having that much an effect and that's because um, stop this though I'm giving it a speed I'm not really giving them any direction the direction is zero um, and these are directions in the X, Y, and the Z. So I'm going to vary that up as well. So let's have a look at what that's called. It's called initial speed direction. Just copy that. Um, make another vary source property. And just copy that into our property. Like so, oops, I've just gone into that, I didn't need to do that. So when you double click, you go inside those little compounds, um, which I don't want to do. So, um, if we go back to our source air, we can see we've got actually three values for our speed direction. Um, but here, we're only changing one value. So I'm gonna put, uh, let's say, you know, if I put two here and minus two there, Every time it works out a random number for this, it will apply that to each of these exactly the same. Um, and I don't want that, I want that to be slightly, I want these to have different directions so we get a randomized direction of the velocities. Um, so, one of the things that when you first start using the graph, you are thinking, this is a bit weird, um, is that you have to sort of explicitly tell uh, by frost what by by frost what type what type of value you are using using this value node and this actually though to begin with seems not sort of one step too far that you don't need but actually gives you a lot of freedom because you can sort of put different sorts of values into different sorts of things and it gives you a, more control but it does slightly less for you if that makes sense so you sort of just have to implicitly tell Bifrost what type of value you're using in quite a lot of occasions so I've got here uh, let's move over this is a vector of three numbers so I want to change this from a float at the moment which is what it is which is a one point number so you can put 1.2 1.3 in a float number I want to change this to a vector of three numbers so if I click on this um, this is all the different types of value types you can change I'm going to go to a vector and I just want to change it to a three and when I go OK you'll see this number will now change to three values um, and I'm just going to Control C and duplicate that because in my random variation I want to plug that into my max, plug that into my min. Am I pausing? I might pause the graph while I'm doing this. Um, and you can see now these are being controlled by these values, and now in these values I can say in my max value I'm going to put these to uh, 2, 2, I'm going to put this to 4, so in the Y is going to have more forks upwards um, and in my min I'm going to do minus 2, minus 2 here so it's giving you a random uh, numbers between minus 2 and 2 for the X and the Z so choose random directions in that way and I'm just going to put this as a 1 so it will just give you more pushing upwards but with a random aspect to it um, I'm going to leave my bias as it is, got that set up and then I just need to daisy chain that in so Um, and just to make sure I changed my speed mode to set, let's give that a go. 
Resume graph. Rewind. And hit play. So you can see we're getting slightly different, they're being forced out in different directions. Um, we're getting more of a sort of these sort of different types, sort of separate. Let's just stop that. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to stop. So now we're not getting that sort of single sphere. We're getting these sort of random pushed out clouds of explosion, which are quite nice. Um, and obviously you can go in here, and I'm just gonna put that to uh, direction. Um, obviously you can go back in here and we could say our speed, we could change our speed, make it more, 12, and six maybe, give that a go. So we'll play around until you get something that's, you know, looks interesting. So there we go, we're getting some nice sort of shapes there. And one other thing just to mention. Um, is that going to stop? Be careful of not cranking like massive numbers into here because what will happen is um, on the first frame it will shoot out uh, in these sort of directions and you will end up very quickly with a very large voxelized area which will really slow down your simulation um, and give you massive file sizes for your cache um, so if you do put large numbers and you sort of hit play and it just sort of hangs on that second frame that's probably what's happened it's just shot out all this sort of information and detail into this area already um, which you're not even really seeing at the moment um, so be careful about thinking about that the sort of bigger this gets the more simulation is going on basically so think about that when you're sort of making these things explode outwards um, so we've varied some of the properties going into our source air um, in the next video we're going to look at the fuel